Hey, welcome back to Diode Press, I'm Graham. So over the last few days, I've been working on a couple projects where I had to do some soldering. And so I've been using one of these little helping hand devices where you can you know, clip in your wires and hold them together to solder connections. But one thing that's kind of lacking is you can't hold like a circuit board in between them to you know, hold it steady while you solder onto it. And so I wanted to make some kind of like clamping system or something to do that. And so most of the time when I'm in the studio working on projects, I have YouTube going on in the background. And I've been watching Tom Lipton over at Ox Tools for a couple years now. When I started watching him, he was making a really large etching press from scratch. And I've always just kind of stuck around for all his new projects. And so he has a 25 part series he just finished creating a, a baby bullet vise. And it's really an amazing project. He started just from bare materials and you know, turned it into you know, a piece of art. It's a really fantastic you know, finished product. And so in the beginning of this project, Tom was nice enough to create files for all the different parts of the vise and kind of schematics of how it goes together so if other people want to make their own. And so obviously I don't have a metal shop or any way to fabricate something like that. But I do have a couple 3D printers. So I thought it'd be cool to kind of take the models that he used to create this vise, modify them to make them printable, and then print out my own version. And then I can use this to, to hold different components. And so I'm just gonna go through in this video a couple of the steps I took to, to modify his files and the 3D printing process to get it made. And so I can't stress enough to make sure to go to Tom's channel and I'll link to it down below and check out the whole project and really all his videos. And also he's gonna be auctioning off his vice and the proceeds are gonna go to, a, to vocational training programs. And there's a GoFundMe set up for that as well. And so I'll go ahead and put that in the description box also. So make sure to go check those things out. And so let's jump into CAD and I'll show you the changes I made to get this to print. So I wanna thank Tom for putting this file out there, making it available to download. So he has a SolidWorks file, I believe. And so I brought that right into Fusion 360 without any issues. And it breaks out into all these different components. You can see a section view and see all the different parts that are inside the model. And obviously when he made this, you know, it's designed to be you know, manually machined and so there's, there's gaps between the pieces. You know, so the idea being, you know, you go in and weld it all together and you fill that all in. But obviously if I'm gonna be 3D printing this whole thing, I'll need to, to fix that in the model here. And again, I urge you to go check out his full videos and, and see, you know, the, the craftsmanship and just amazing work that went into making this. You know, I'm spending a, an hour or so on a, a Saturday afternoon to, to put together, a, you know, a plastic print of it. So I don't wanna take anything away from, you know, his craftsmanship. So the first thing I did was I, I took his model and I just copied it over just so you can see the difference between the two. And so right off the bat, you can see the, the fillets and all that stuff. And so I'll just go quickly through the timeline and you can see the, see the difference. And so I first start off with just adding these fillets, you know, taking all these different bodies and making them into to just the few parts that I need. Because, you know, since I'm just 3D printing it, I don't need all these different components on the inside. And so I went through and added a bunch of fillets and tried to kind of, you know, visually make it look look as good as I could. If we look on the inside here, so I took a lot of these components and I started merging them together because I really don't need all this stuff on the inside. You know, I just need the, the two parts of the vise, the, the lead screw here in the center and then the cap to hold it together. And so I went through and just kind of merged all this stuff together. And so depending on your 3D printer and how you're gonna, you know, print this out, you know, there's clearance issues. So when, you know, you're machining this out of metal, obviously you can have really tight tolerances. But you know, 3D printing, typically I leave you know, 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters between surfaces if I need them to, to slide by each other and fit together. And so on here, I just expanded out this hole here, you know, expanded out some of the gaps and just added in some of these tolerances so everything, everything fits together. But when I print it out, you know, there'll, there'll be room for it to work. And I also changed the screw sizes here to, to fit the, the machine screws I had on hand. And so to get the, the screw down the center to, to work out with a 3D print, you know, I had to use a, a little bit of trial and error to, to get a good thread pattern and get it to all work out. So the first thing was to expand out the hole where it fits into here and also make sure there's, there's clearance. Then I went and used the threading operations in Fusion. And so I just use this Acme screw threads and they're half inch threads. And yeah, there you go, you can see it lining up there. And so what I did is I took this, this screw here, I just shrunk it down. I did a couple different tests to make sure I was you know, getting the right, the right size. And so even though you look at it here and there, there's quite a bit of gap around here, when it prints out, it's actually a, a pretty tight fit. I delete out some of these features on the inside that, that you know, I don't need, they're not gonna print. 
I just want the two outer screw, you know, the outer mounting holes to show. And so there's the finished model, you know, his on the left and mine on the right. And you can see if you look at the, the different pieces, you know, mine only has a couple pieces in here. Oh, and to make this handle here, I just took, took his, his handle and for the cap, I put a hole in there. And then I made a small little peg on the, the top piece here. And so when you put it together, I can then glue it in. And it all fits together here, then the model I can you know, slide it apart. And I don't have quite as much room when it comes all the way out. That's about the last thread, but that's plenty of opening for me. And like I said, this is just for circuit boards and kind of small components that I just want to be able to hold. And so the last thing I do before I, I printed this out, because this, the red piece here takes about eight hours to print. And I believe this piece was about four hours and then, you know, a couple hours for the small ones. So I didn't want to, you know, spend all that time printing it out and then find out it doesn't work. So now I isolate this, you know, go into this component. I want to slice a section through here. So I want to make sure that I get a section to print out that'll have the back of the vise, the front of the vise, and a chunk of this threading. That way I know everything works together and I have enough clearance through there. So all I'm gonna do is make a couple of offset planes. You know, say put one here, you know, maybe a 15 millimeter wide section. And then I can split this body with that face and then do it one more time with this face over here hide those. Now I have this small little slice of the model. And this will only take, you know, 20 minutes or maybe, maybe an hour, say, to, to print out all the pieces through this wedge. And so I did the same thing for the, the screw and the, the front of the vise. I'm gonna go ahead and print these out and I can do a test fit. So I'm printing this out on my Lulzbot Mini 3D printer. And I'm using 0.2 millimeter layer heights and it's getting printed out of PLA plastic. And so as you can see, it's not gonna take very long to you know, do this whole print of the slice. And so here's the first part of the vise, that's the back piece. And that's the wedge that was cut out of the front piece of the vise. And then here's the threading and then the, the small kind of test piece that I made of. And you can see how nicely they fit together. It's really a nice fit. And there's a little bit of extra clearance, so I'm gonna probably tighten up the model just a little bit to snug it up. And so now we know everything's gonna work and go ahead and you know put this into my slicing software and then print the whole thing out. And you know, obviously, you know, my, my fillets and, and things over here aren't nearly as nice as Tom's welding and, and hand filing, but it'll look pretty good once it's all printed out. Because of the smaller print size of the Lulzbot printer, I had to do it in two batches. So the first one is gonna be the front of the vise. And you can see here, I had to print it with support material because the front of it's curved. And I really wanted to print it in this orientation. So that way, you know, everything was nice and cylindrical as it printed vertically. And here you can see the rest of the components being printed. And I managed to print them all on the, the print bed at the same time. And again, there was a little bit of support material needed to, to keep the orientation proper. But by doing it like this, it made the threads come out really nice as it is built vertically. So if I tried to print it horizontally, it would have had to create support material between each of the threads to get it to hold up properly. But this took really barely any cleanup once it was printed to get it to all work together. And here's all the finished pieces ready to assemble. So the two main bodies of the vise just slip together, and then I can go ahead and screw in the lead screw. Next, I can put on this small retaining disc. And this just locks the front of the vise to the lead screw. So when you unscrew it, the vise comes with it. And I'm just using a couple of small machine screws to, to secure it in there. And I made the holes that I 3D printed the exact size of the machine screws. So as I screw them in the first time, it actually creates threads. Now all that's left is I pop in the handle and put the cap on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and super glue it in later. And that's all there is to it. All right, so that's gonna wrap up this video. So thanks again to Tom over at Ox Tools for, you know, he posted these files for people to use. So thanks a lot. Make sure to check out his channel and make sure to check out the GoFundMe page and, you know, donate some money if you can or, you know, to help spread the word about it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.
Thanks for watching! To keep up with the videos when they're posted, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to help support this channel, you can check out the Diode Press Patreon page, where I post behind the scenes photos as well as other patron rewards. Thanks! Okay.